I'm really uh, excited about today because tomorrow we get to start. It's just one day closer. And uh, I've appreciated a bunch what, uh, what the kids did this summer, and uh, along with Ross Galagi and our, our strength staff. And, and uh, we're looking forward to, to getting going tomorrow. And it was good to have everyone uh, show up here today and, and ready to go. Last week, a lot of them were finishing up some of the summer school classes. and. Some were able to get home for a little bit, so it truly really feels like the, the start of you know our fourth phase. You know, before you play the season, and it was in winter conditioning, one spring ball, summer, and, and then fall camp, and, and so um, enjoying continuing to get to know this group. And uh, you know, we added 30 some freshmen to it, and I thought they've assimilated well with the upperclassmen, and uh, so today. Uh, have some meetings and, and do a lot of the, the media and the family fun day, but, but tomorrow we get, get going and, and uh, I think everyone's really ready to do that and excited to do that. Uh, you know, as far as injuries, TJ Edwards is the only one that I don't know uh, when he'll be able to, if he does anything in camp. And then we've got a, a handful of guys that are coming off of but it's a surgery, you know, like uh, Dakota had and Dan Bolts had, or some things where they're just limited. But uh, so right now we're uh, you know, we're fairly healthy, aside from uh, TJ, and uh, you know he's progressing and, and don't quite know when he'll be ready. But he'd be the only guy that I think may not do much in camp physically. So, uh, but excited, excited to, to get going and, and appreciate. This group, and I think you know, training camp is going to be big for this team, and big for a number of individuals, and, and certainly some position uh, battles. Most notably, the, the quarterback. I think it's safety, and, and I think uh, kind of defining at, at the receiver spot, and, and then you know, there's other positions that, that I think we're looking at uh, building some depth. So it's uh, it's the fun part about fall camp. It actually will go fast, and so we've got to maximize each. Each day, each opportunity. So the second part first, and that you know, obviously Dan's played a lot of center, but um, you know, Michael's also done a lot at center, and and um, and I think that most years we, you know, we've gone through it, and you end up you know, want to have two or three centers, so. Um, you know, Michael started center, and and Dan will end up doing both, and, and it'll be determine how practices go for him. You know, Dan's coming off of you know, what was a season-ending injury last year, and uh, he's done a ton of stuff and and, and worked at it, and, and yet we are going to be uh, more cautious than pushing him. The, the, what I appreciate from Dan is that. He is smart and he cares and he works at it. So the number of reps that he will need would be different than, let's say, a younger guy. Um, so I think I think Corey needs uh, needs work, and you know just because he's playing some games, he didn't play a ton last year, and you know I don't think anyone on offense is masters of the system yet. And so I think that he, along with everyone, uh, really on our team, you know, needs the work. Yeah, certainly, you know, both Jazz and Rob played, played a lot last year. And, and uh, Rob's, I think one thing that he's got to, you know, try to do is, is be healthy. And I don't think he's ever gone through a spring ball or a fall camp. And there's a couple guys, um, you know, Rob being one of them, that we're going to do some things to to try to make sure that they they get through camp, and uh, and I thought Jazz really it was fun for me to see Jazz where he was last spring and and the work that he put in and, and how he's grown, and uh, and I thought that he did a heck of a job last year. You know, probably more as much more as a complimentary receiver, and and he's got an opportunity now to to step into a. Another role. Good job. I think that there's spring is much more um, individual.
specific. I think you can kind of make more mistakes, you know, and you kind of want them to push the, the envelope. And yet I don't want to, I'm hesitating a little bit because I don't want to ever zap that. You know, you're continuing to learn. You don't get to a point and you, you're good. I mean, it, it's all the quarterbacks have had, you know, you hope you, you're continuing to learn throughout the season. Um, I think that there's more, we should be tighter around, you know, with the receivers and um, offensively that that you can gauge the quarterback, do they move the team or not. You know, I think that's a big part of the evaluation. Um, but the bottom line is, is we got to get both Bart and Alex ready to play because one will be the starter and one will be one play away from being that guy. Well, you, you have a lot of discussions with um, with the players and you know, I thought that he's, one thing I've, I've thought with Corey is that he's taken what he went through last year and has tried to learn from it. And then try to apply, then he got to put that into action and applying it. And, uh, you know, we were just talking about that with quarterbacks, so you got to get out of here. You know, you got to learn, and sometimes you learn by making mistakes. And you know what? That was Corey last year, some of it on the field with injuries and, and some of it off the field. And, and I think that he's taken all that to heart, and he wants to be the best player he can be, but also the best person he can be. Well, I think all, nothing just happens. You know, I think that all the, everything that goes on, you know, takes people. And, you know, we've, we've been fortunate that, you know, since the time I've been here in Wisconsin, that we've had upperclassmen that, that reach out to younger kids and try to teach them, show them the way. And, uh, and then I think there's a natural evolution that occurs when, you know, positions, roles, uh, people graduate and they, they have to be filled. People have to step up. And, and so I think that, you know, it, it doesn't just happen. You know, guys actively work uh, to, to make those transitions, but nothing just happens. You thought that uh, for David, it, it might be the best position for him, and I think it's an area that we certainly want to and need to have depth. I don't think any position move, you don't, you, you do it for two things, but I think they both have to be part of it. That's, is it right for the individual? And is it good for the team? You know, if it's good for the individual and good for the team, then you do it. So we thought it was going to be good for David and good for our team. And, you know, as far as the, the depth at the tight end position, you know, we've, you know, Foom's played a lot of football, and I think he's a guy that's got to step into a, a new role. Uh, Eric Steffes has been around. If we keep him, you know, healthy, I think he can add something to it. And, and you know, Penniston's, a, I think, a talented young player that's got to grow up and and then we've got some, some other younger players with it. And, uh, you know, we've also gone some years where we played, you know, Billy Nagy's senior year, he played some tight end. And we'll, we'll find roles for guys, and if they've earned them, we'll get them on the field. I think it's it's really important that we get the running game going in the right direction. And, and I thought that we, you know, we certainly finished last year with that. Um, you know, I wasn't here for for a few years, but the you know, Coach Settle talks all the time about the standard is the standard. And, you know, fortunately, if you're talking about Wisconsin and the running game, that standard's been really high, you, you know, unusually so. But that's that's the standard. And, uh, and I think that we will – I've liked what the guys have done, you know, in the offense line, the tight ends, and the, you know, running backs. I think they've – they're taking it to heart and know that we got to be better, you know, that'll help our team. And um, so I like what they're doing. We, we know what we got to accomplish and that's we got to be better. I didn't think we could consistently run the football against everyone like we wanted to. And that's what we're striving to do. And the one thing is with a lot of guys gained valuable experience last year. And I think that 
that will be better because of that. With uh, you know Chris, you know thought he obviously was a talented player, and, and then as we got to know him in the recruiting process, uh, you know liked who he was as a person, you know competitive, and um, you know he was he was actually interested in you know trying to transfer last year, and you know we were trying to encourage just to see how it goes, and and um, you know Nick Nelson Durante. And coached them, and, and so we felt like we knew who they are. And I think this year they can, you know, it's it's not always easy. But the Ram did a great job last year of maximizing the opportunity. And just because they're not playing on Saturdays, you got all that practice time. And and I think for you know you can focus on the weight room. You, you're not going to play in Saturday's game, so you can be sore on Friday. You know, so I think there's some growth in you know Nick and Chris. Um, you know, they're, they're young, and so they can still develop. So I think they can maximize, or need to maximize, and we got to help them, but there's a lot of growth that can happen. And I think, too, that, you know, your practices can be better. I remember Shobes and, and Vince talking about Ryan, you know, and saying that the you know, best tackle we might have played is what we see Tuesdays and, and Wednesdays. And so if you're approaching those days, it, it helps the player that we're talking about you know, Ryan last year and, and Chris and Nick. But really Nick should be able to challenge Rob and Jazz during practice to where they're getting better. So hopefully you know, we just all have to elevate. And I think, you know, practices have to be competitive. And, and when you do compete and, and when you put yourself out there, I think, you know, growth can occur and that's what we got to. Yeah, I think that, I think you always want to address the schedule with your players. And, and they do it at different times because you know, this year they can be talking about how hard it is, and maybe previous years, oh, you should win these games X, Y, and Z. You know, and and, and so I think you're always wanting to talk to them. And yet, I have gotten energy from our kids, and that this is why they came to Wisconsin. You, you know, when when they were getting recruited, you know, is when you know, when Vince Beagle was getting recruited. That's when we played Michigan State in the, in the Big Ten championship game. And, so they pictured, you know, that year we played Michigan State, and, uh, you know, we played Ohio State, we played Michigan. You, you know, when you think of playing in the Big Ten, those are teams you, you think about playing. And, and certainly every year now, you know, I think Nebraska's been in the league long enough where that's truly been a, a big part of it for these kids. You know, that is the Big Ten, and the Big Ten West, and, and Iowa. So our, our kids are excited about it, and, and I'm excited about it. And, uh, you know the schedule. Every year, it's uh, you know it comes out, and and those are opportunities, and, and what we do with those opportunities, it's on us. And